Hey guys, welcome to tutorial number 8. I'm Marcus and uh, today we are going to look at how we are going to build the front layer of the uh, bus service screen with the Kiwi Garden map view. And so far we have go through 7 tutorials uh, and I really hope that you can uh, follow all the way until now uh, without any issue. But if you do have any issue, don't hesitate to uh, leave your questions at the comment section of the tutorial. Well, um, today we are going to put the map view and also uh, at the same time on the map view, we are going to have the marker of the bus. Uh, so on, when you click on this marker, it's going to pop up a menu to show you the detail of that particular bus. We have the same thing uh, as the bus stop screen in which you have a bus stop map view and then when you click on the bus stop it's going to pop up a dialog to show you the detail of the bus stop so uh, there is the difference between two different screens but the concept of uh, getting them work is the same um, in the bus service uh, backdrop um, when we click on this down button then it will create a bus service list at back layer Unlike uh, the bus stop screen, when you are on the screen itself, the front layer and the back layer will be created at the same time. So today we are going to look at um, another API uh, query, which is called bus services. Yeah, bus services is available at LTA data more uh, section 2.2. So in the previous tutorial, we have covered 2.4 which is bus stop 2.3 which is bus routes uh, so we use the bus stops to create the front layer of um, the bus stop screen backdrop and then bus route additionally for the back layer of the bus stop screen uh, and then uh, we also look at now now in this tutorial we're going to look at bus services and then also we are going to look at bus arrival so so if you click on 2.2, um, yeah, these are the um, variables that are available under this API call. So what we are going to do is uh, we, we will do a get request to this URL. Well, we can do that in Postman to look at what is about. So if you kind of Postman, right, you put the URL and then if you send a get request, this is what you're going to get. Um, so under the key value, uh, we have uh, so each object is about one bus service. Uh, well, you can see that actually um, um, we have the same bus service number, but the the difference between them is the direction. So um, the same a same bus service number can go from, for example, uh, north side of Singapore to the to, to the south side of Singapore. And then you can also start from the south side of Singapore going back to the north side of Singapore. So you can see the origin code and the destination code are uh, actually reversed. So yeah. And what we're going to do is first we want to get all this data and save in our database which is called myapp.db. We are going to create a table called bus services and after that we are going to query the data into our main.py in order to uh, use it for the purpose of building our uh, map view okay and uh, so as usual the first step that we are going to do is go to our web based version of the tutorial uh, we have covered the first one and the step one we want to create a table called bus services in our myapp.db so in the, the create db.py, this is what we need. So let's go back to our code. And uh, this is where we stop in the last tutorial. And I believe you will have this. When you click on the bus, front layer, back layer, when you click on bus services, you don't have anything in the front layer yet. So, so we will close this. And then in the create db.py, uh, you can actually comment this out. And then we are going to copy this Paste here So create table if not exist 
if the table is not exist yet, exist yet uh, we're going to create the table name called bus services with this uh, column name and let's do it there's no error so I, I think this is uh, successful the next thing that we want to do is to start to query the data from the data model API um, so um, what we're going to have is uh, this uh, base UI and then our bus services uh, path is going to be LTAO data services slash bus services and uh, this time how many how many skip do we need well I have tested it and actually we only need to skip one time like uh, if you skip 500 you will still get a full bunch of data if you skip like 1000 there is no data anymore so the, you only need to skip like uh, 500 then you will get the remaining data okay so it's 500 so we can say for i uh, for i in the range of 0 to 2 it's going to give you 0 and 1 okay so we're going to copy this and then we go back to our popular db.py and this is where we will comment this out in the bus route which we did in the previous tutorial and then we paste our code here so uh, when i is equal to zero this is our url without a skip and then we are going to do a, a get request uh, with the response we are going to get a key of value so for each bus service for each bus service we are going to insert it into the table called bus services with this uh, uh, column name um, based on this documentation So we want to store all this information including the bus service number, operator direction, category, origin code, destination code. So origin code, destination code, they are in fact bus stop code. And then peak frequency is uh, um, in the morning during the peak working hours. Uh, what will be the bus uh, frequency? and then off peak frequency uh, and then in the evening time what will be the peak frequency off peak frequency and the loop description <coughs> okay and then uh, depending on how many variables that you have you put for example uh, 10 variables with 10 question marks and then these are going to be all the value that you are referring to to this question mark so the order is important, remember that uh, otherwise you will get into some trouble and then uh, when i is not equal to 0 which means i is equal to 1 in this case we are going to skip the first 500 <coughs> i times 500 is 500 because i is equal to 1 and then uh, request.get and then get the response so for each uh, bus service also at the same time we want to insert to our table so uh, let's save it and run it it should be completed uh, pretty soon <coughs> so the next step that we want to do is to check inside our db browser let me open our db browser okay and this is complete so if we open our db browser, open the database open... Uh, sorry project, my transport app, my app, 
this is my database so now I have a table called bus services and then if I browse the data alright this is all the data that we managed to query uh, sorry bus services okay this is the data that we query from uh, the LTA data more and then we have around 718 data cool so the next thing that we want to do um, based on our text based tutorial is that uh, we want to start query this data and then we want to store inside a variable called total bus services response and uh, to do that let's close the database we don't need this anymore in the man app we want to add this variable <coughs> okay total bus services response and then we want to uh, send a query we're going to call a function called bus service query and we can do that underneath this bus route query and of course we need to define a function called bus services bus services query and then for this we are going to put it here so i just put a sample data here for you to understand how it looks like so uh, when we fetch all from this query it's going to be an array of tuple so this um, total bus services response is going to be an array of uh, list of tuple sorry not array and okay so after you query it uh, the next thing that we want to do is that uh, before we proceed to create a map view uh, I would like to uh, revisit this uh, create bus stop list widget function. So remember uh, in tutorial number six, uh, I mentioned that I want to get all the bus arrival data uh, for the nearby bus stop to use in the bus service uh, screen. But uh, after looking into it, I think I want to change the way of doing it in which I want to do this query uh, directly inside the bus service map view.py. I don't want to do it here. Uh, for more dynamic uh, um, purposes. So what I mentioned here is that I want you to remove this self dot total bus array response. Remove this and also at the same time remove this. Uh, take it out. And then later on, we're going to do it directly inside the bus service map view. Save it. Okay. So step number nine, we want to create a bus service map view. Now, uh, so first thing uh, in the bus service backdrop uh, layout of high at back this uh, at this line of code. We want to import it here because later on we want to have this map view at our front layer. If you if you don't put this here, you are going to have an error later on. So the next thing is uh, in the change screen function, uh, under the if screen name is equal to bus service screen, we want to have this. So so what what is this about? So, um, when we are at the bus service screen, uh, we want to check if front layer has got anything, which the class is bus service map view. If there is bus service map view, every time we add the bus service screen, we want to remove that, and then we want to create a new one. We want to instantiate bus service map view class, and then we want to put it at the at the, at the front layer of the backdrop. So this makes sure that our uh, data is always the latest one, our map view is always up to date, uh, our marker is always the uh, most updated one depending on your location. Okay, and then of course we want to map view to center on your current latitude and longitude. Okay, cool. So. Um, 
So we we want to say bus service map view is an object property. I will correct this. This need to be indented uh, to be the same line as this uh, bus service. And what else? Maybe I did something wrong. Okay. Yeah, this except need to be at the same indentation as the try. I will correct this later on. Sorry about that. And let's go to this one. Add our bus service map view as object property. So um, in the bus service folder, we want to create bus service map view dot pi. So basically, the step is the same as how you did it for the bus stop map view uh, front layer, bus stop screen front layer. So bus service map view dot pi. Um, actually, you can try to uh, do it on your own so that to make sure that you really understand it except that well let's copy until 9131 copy paste so i said that uh, there's something different here inside the map view so i'm going to explain in detail and pay really attention to it okay so as uh, so I think we need to do the next step at the same time, which is a bus service map view dot TV. Bus service map view dot TV, then save it. So what's gonna happen is when you are at the bus service map view screen, as it's being built. As the latitude and longitude is changed, um, even though you are you have first you have you are just first created the map view screen, it's going to call the function call start getting bus service in view of view, which is here. So, this is going to uh, call the function call bus service in view of view, which is this one. If the user stays at that particular screen for one second or more, so. And as this uh, function is being called, uh, we're going to get the minimum and maximum latitude and longitude of that particular box or swing. And next, we want to check if self dot daughter bus services. So initially, under this class, we declare total bus services is empty. So if this is empty, less than one. We want to get the total bus services response for the main.py. So we come here and pick up we pick up the total amount of uh, bus services in the list. Remember that just now we do the self dot bus services query in which we store all the bus services information inside this variable. And now we want to pick up this variable and go to our map view and assign to this variable. Okay, same for the bus stop. Uh, if this uh, bus stop, we, we say that this variable bus dot bus stop is an empty list. And then if this is, if the length on this is less than one, okay, we want to go to the main.py pick up this and come back here assign to this variable okay get that so one more thing they want to do is um, oh actually we don't need this um, I will make sure this is removed uh, in the tutorial so so now we have the total bus stop and total bus services what we need to do next um, so I will leave this one out and then I will come back to this later why we need to set this to empty 
So initially we, we declare that bus stop code and bus service code are empty. Okay. So <clears throat> we will first try to remove uh, any marker on the map view because we will check if for w in self dot work self refers to the map view. We will go through the map view and then we will see if there is any marker, bus service marker. If there is, we will remove it because uh, as you as the user navigate through the map view, uh, it's going to create marker. We have to remove the old marker before we create a new one. Otherwise, it's going to create more and more and more marker until your whole map is marker. <clears throat> so we want to remove the old one before we start to create a marker. <clears throat> so to create the marker of the bus service on the map view, what we need to do? First, um, first we need to check uh, all the bus stop that is nearby. Um, we are not able to go directly to check all the bus services in nearby. We have to start with bus stop. So we start with checking all the bus stop nearby as what we did in the bus stop screen for bus stop and total bus stop is bus stop uh, index 4 which is the longitude is more than minimum and less than maximum and the bus stop index 3 more than minimum latitude and less than maximum latitude uh, we are going to uh, save the bus stop code in a variable called code so if this code is already saved in our variable bus stop code we are going to skip this uh, we are not going to add this bus stop into our as our marker otherwise we will add this bus stop we will throw this bus stop into this function called add bus stop so when we throw this bus stop to here which means uh, we want to do uh, Another thing which is uh, we want to take this code and then we want to go to this uh, path which is section 2.1 of um, the LTA data mode. Section 2.1 allow you to pass in the bus stop code in order to get a request, I mean a response of all the bus services they are coming to that bus stop code we call it bus arrival so now i have the bus stop code i have all the uh, bus stop in my uh, map view and then i want to get all the bus services they are coming to this bus stop this is what i'm trying to do here so i'm also doing a request this time i'm doing a url request so on success I call a function called update bus arrival uh, underscore one bus stop. So this function is going to do what? This function is going to take um, the argument one uh, from um, from here URL request. What is this argument one is about? This argument one will return you something like this. Okay. This is what you will get from the argument if you have done the request successfully. So the bus stop code is going to be equal to this response dot get bus stop code. This response okay. This is the response. I will get the bus stop code. Oops. So this is what I'm trying to get. And then I will save here. And then um, also at the same time, I'm going to get the services, which is this one. But then under these services is a list. Under this list, I have a lot of object. Okay. Uh, next bus. Uh, sorry, this is one whole object. Object uh, belonging to one bus service number, and then different service number is under different object. And then under this uh outer object inside i will have service number operator next bus arrival time 
next next bus next 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 bus and then I will have the latitude and longitude and the estimated arrival time okay so now again inside my map view I have all the bus stop and then I have all the bus services that are coming to this bus stop okay so what I'm interested in is only the next bus I'm not interested to the next next bus and the next 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 bus uh, I'm only interested to the next bus this is what I want to display in my map view so so this is why I define that next bus service number is equal to arrival service number latitude arrival next bus latitude longitude is arrival next bus longitude and then I create a unique code which is a combination of these this unique code I'm going to save it inside the bus service code below here I'm going to save it in inside this bus service code so if this unicode happen to be repeated I want to skip it otherwise I will throw it to a function called bus service add bus service so this add bus service is going to take the arrival information which is this one together with the bus stop code okay and then it's going to say the latitude and longitude is going to be arrival next part latitude so I'm going to take this latitude and longitude and then I'm going to create a marker okay now you see I do so much of filtering I have my screen and then I have my nearby bus stop and then I have all the bus services that are coming to this bus stop and then I already look at the next bus I don't want to look at the next next bus and next 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 bus and then this next bus uh, I will check if they are repeating uh, and then if they are not repeating I'm going to create a marker for these bus races okay so then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to create a pop-up menu therefore I need the information of for those pop-up menu the pop-up menu is going to display the information in section 2.3 which is this so how do I get this by having this 2.1 information okay so you now you, you come here uh, you can see that for bus service in total bus services um, I'm going to check if the bus service number is same as the bus service number that are in, the, in this screen and then if their origin code and destination code are the same so 2.1 is going to have origin code destination code and bus service number same for 2.3 it's going to have service number uh, service number sorry this are 2.3 it's going to have service number it's going to have origin code and destination code so I'm going to match these three variable between bus arrival and bus services if they match okay then I will pick up this information the whole the whole object I'm gonna if they if they match I'm gonna check the next thing the next filter which is if uh, the longitude and latitude of this bus is within my screen if yes then I will pass the bus service information to my marker so that when you click on it it's going to show you a pop-up menu to see to show the information of that bus service okay I hope you can uh, catch up what I'm trying to say so okay uh, if you don't understand uh, try to uh, leave your comment uh, in the, at the, at the comment section of this video but uh, yeah what I'm trying to do again is to just first to get the bus stop nearby and then all the bus that are coming to this bus stop and then I'm trying to uh, match between bus arrival and bus services and then I'm going to capture the uh, if they match and capture 
and bus services information and then push it to the marker so that when you click it in it's going to give you a dialogue with the bus services information okay so remember that here you need the bus stop code to append the code to make sure it will it won't repeat okay and then here we need the bus service code to append a unit code so that uh, we keep track of what we already shown on the screen so that we won't have repeated marker and then that's why uh, here I want to uh, as every time as a user navigate their screen before I'm doing all this I want to first clear the bus stop code and bus service code make sure they are empty okay and then also one more thing that I want to do here is that every time I have a bus service that I add to the marker I will push it to the main dot pi through this function update nearby bus service uh, I haven't defined this function yet in the main dot pi I'm gonna push the bus service information to the main dot pi so that I can use those information to create my <coughs> bus service list at the back layer of the backdrop in the next video okay i'm losing my sound <clears throat> okay so um so every time i push it to the main dot pi it's going to store it store uh, it's going to append all the bus service information and then uh, what I'm going to do here is um, so every time the user uh, change the latitude and longitude of the map view I want to make sure that this variable at the main.py is clear so that it won't uh, still it doesn't still keep the old information every time the user navigate to the screen the old data is removed and then you append the new data and show it on the screen that is what I'm trying to do here okay <clears throat> so in the bus service folder we create a bus service marker.py and then we copy this so these are pretty much the same as what we did for uh, other map view so I won't go through in detail again Basically, we create a marker and you and you click it, it's going to pop up a menu. And then also we create a pop up menu.py. And then you can copy this. Paste here. So these are the header, which is the same as uh, this information. And then the attribute value is going to be the bus service data that you pass to here okay so we pass the bus service data here which is from the marker okay bus service data and then this bus service data is from the map view which is uh, here marker dos bus service is bus service data is equal to bus service okay save it and then uh, this dialog right this dialog is going to link to your kv.uix.dialog so inside there uh, kvmd uix dialog so if you search for bus service so we are creating this class bus service md dialog to store all the attribute value so that we can use this attribute value in our builder dot load string because here we are saying the this md this in our port on manual is going to have a lot of team box and this is the label of each attribute and then the value is going to be root dot uh, the uh, the variable name this root is referring to the class that i showed you just now this is the root okay
well now we are at step number 16 uh yeah i explained this 17 i explained this this one is important to use my kvmd from my github repository uh github so that you are always at the same page as me um, in terms of uh, KVMD so make sure that you use my version of KVMD otherwise uh, you're gonna have problem okay so under the main dot part of course you want to import the bus service map, map view class uh, in the main.py, we want to import bar service map view class so that we can instantiate it and create a map view. And then in the bar service map view.py, remember that uh, we call a function just now update nearby bus service to push this bus service data to the main.py, but we haven't created this function. So now we want to create this function update nearby bus service. create this function here let's see okay we'll put it here okay update nearby bus service we pass uh, the information here from bus service map view.py and what we are going to do is we want to append the argument if you print the args the argument from uh, that is passed from bus service uh, map view is going to be a uh, multiple tuple inside a big tuple so to reference to uh, sorry it's going to look looks like this okay tuple inside tuple so what we are interested in is this the inner tuple so that's why we only append the arcs uh, with the index of zero okay and then uh we keep all the uh, bus service information inside a variable called nearby bus services and on the top under the class main app we declare my nearby bus services is an empty list and then uh so as the information come here from the bus service map view as the information coming here from bus service map view, we store all the information inside this nearby bus services. Okay, we store all the information here so that the bus service map view, so that uh, when you want to set it empty, is possible from the bus service map view. Okay, so um. So with this variable, in the next video, uh, we can use this variable, the information inside, all the nearby bus services inside this variable to create our uh, bus service list at the back layer of uh, the bus service screen, which will look like this, something like this. So if you if you have ten bus services in the bus service map view, you are going to have ten uh, bus services at the back layer as well. Okay. So last but not least, we want to create the bus service GPS helper dot pi as how we did it for other tutorial. Bus service GPS helper, the main purpose is to help you to uh, link with the uh, GPS on your phone. So it's going to check if your device is Android and it's going to get permission from your phone. And once you turn on the GPS, it's going to call a function called update blinker position. So this function is going to get the latitude and longitude of your current location and they are going to ask your bus service map view to be positioned on your current latitude and longitude okay once the map is centered 
I, we are going to pass the latitude and longitude information to the main.py current lat and light, current long so that when you change to other map view on other screen you will be on the same uh, location as well okay if you didn't turn on your gps it's going to pop up md dialog and say you ha you have a gps error okay of course uh, to to use this G master this gps helper in the main.py we need to import the class and what i'm going to imp do is i will import it under bus if screen is bus service screen so this is the last step that we are going to do import it and call it instantiate it and call it function run and i think that's it uh we can actually run this and see what we get so bus okay bus services now this is the uh, front layer now we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 11 bus services they are nearby your location if you click this it's going to pop up a bus service details and we have the service number direction uh, operating direction category origin code destination code blah 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 this is the same as your information here okay so this one is service 54 14 you can see uh yeah 36 these are all different bus services if you click this button in the next video uh, it's going to show you um the this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven bus services at the back layer but for now if you click this it's going to throw you an error because we haven't created a function for this button yet so this button right what we are going to do bus service backdrop uh on open as you uh when you click uh, this button right it's going to call a function called create bus service list widget at the uh, main.py so app dot create bus service list widget we have to create this function uh we're going to create it in the next tutorial where it will create uh this list for us okay um yeah um please stay st stay tuned to the to the series and in the next video we are going to uh proceed to do this and we have more and more cool stuff coming uh i know this uh, bus stop and bus services are a bit confusing but uh, yeah trust me more fun stuff are coming and stay tuned to the channel and i hope to see you in the next video okay